Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Tracy, you know, most of us know the feeling of trying to get through the day when we're feeling tired after a poor night's sleep, but apparently we're not alone. <laughs> According to a study released last year by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, one in three Americans doesn't get enough sleep. One third of us. You know, it's almost surprising that it isn't more. But <laughs> Sometimes one third, it I guess, seems is, like that, yeah. <laughs> Feeling tired is, is bad enough, but there are, there are bigger problems, health problems associated with a lack of sleep, including an increased risk for heart attack and stroke. So why the sleep crisis and how do we fix it? Joining us on the phone to discuss is Dr. Ann Wheaton, an epidemiologist and sleep program lead in the Division of Population Health at the CDC. Welcome to the program, Dr. Wheaton. It's nice to meet you. Hi, thanks for having me. Dr. Wheaton, thanks for joining us. Uh, you're in Atlanta, correct? Yes, I am. Well, it sounds like there are a lot of people in this country who could use a little more time in the sheets, huh? That's what <laughs> your studies have shown. <laughs> Yes, we're talking millions of people, yes. And is the number as high as we said, and as your study found, that it's one-third of us don't get enough sleep? Yeah, it's been pretty consistent for the past decade, decade or so that about one-third of adults don't get enough sleep. Are we becoming more aware of the fact that you have to have good sleep health to have good overall health? I hope so. I don't know if um, as many people are acting on it as as they should, but um, I, I think it, the awareness is increasing out there. What does poor sleep health or poor sleep hygiene mean? What do, how does it affect our overall health? So um, sleep, good sleep hygiene are just um, habits that are related to sleep. And um, so we're talking things like uh, make, make sh making sure that you've got enough time built into your schedule to get the amount of sleep that you need. Um, it's really important to be consistent. So going to bed at the same time each night and getting up at the same time each morning, even on the weekends, and that can be difficult. Um, setting the stage for good sleep by making sure your bedroom's dark, quiet, not too hot or too cold. Uh, turning off or removing televisions, computers, mobile devices, and other distracting or light-emitting electrical uh, devices from the bedroom. And then in the hours leading up to sleep, avoiding large meals, caffeine, and alcohol. Um, actually, most people don't realize that alcohol can actually disturb your sleep. So it might help you fall asleep, but your sleep quality suffers. Well, that's too bad, isn't it? <laughs> I, I mean, a, a nightcap, you don't recommend a nightcap, in other words. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. All right, so you've given us some hints about how to get a good night's sleep. Um, but tell us what uh, the uh, adverse health effects are when you don't get enough sleep. Why, why is the CDC concerned? Well, um, some effects can result after one night of not getting enough sleep. So these acute effects are primarily on your brain. Um, the most obvious thing is feeling sleepy, but it can also affect your mood. It can make you less attentive to your environment, slow down your reaction times, and impair your decision-making skills. And so these can all lead to things like drive, drowsy driving crashes, which could result in injuries or, or death. Um, one, night, one bad night's sleep can also impact your immune system. So, for example, research has shown that if you don't get enough sleep the night before you get your flu shot, it won't be as effective. Hmm. But wow. over time, not getting enough quality sleep on a regular basis may increase your risk for many chronic conditions. And what, and what is quality sleep? I mean, there's some people who say, oh, I only need five hours. I mean, I don't believe them, but that's what they believe. That's what they believe of themselves. So getting by is not the same thing as good health. So, yes, you may be able to function on five hours of sleep, but that's not necessarily what you need for good health. Mm. Um, most adults, and we're talking, you know, 95, 99% need at least seven hours of sleep on a regular basis for good health. Um, so if you don't get enough sleep over time, this can affect your risk for many chronic conditions, including hypertension, obesity and diabetes, cardiovascular disease, depression, and even Alzheimer's disease. So um, you're, you're not, uh, it's like if, if you're eating and you're not eating a good diet, you can get by, but you're not as healthy as you could be if you're not getting good sleep or good, uh, good diet. Right. So for sleep, so we, we're, we've been talking mostly about how much sleep you get, 
but um, the quality of your sleep is also important, and that can be affected by things like sleep disorders. So if you've got sleep apnea, you're constantly interrupting your sleep throughout the night. You, you won't necessarily realize it, um, but that's what's happening. And so that can affect your sleep. So even if you get enough sleep, it's not good quality sleep. So you mentioned when it comes to health risks that not getting enough sleep uh, can increase your risk for heart disease, for stroke, for Alzheimer's disease. Uh, does Haven't there been studies also, and maybe it was your study, that showed that it actually decreases your life expectancy? There have been some studies that have uh, looked at that. Our study did not. We were just looking at the prevalence of uh, inadequate sleep in, in the country. But dementia or Alzheimer's, huh? There's been some research done recently um, that's looking at um, this uh, system in the brain that basically functions when you're asleep, that kind of cleans out um, the clutter of, of, of the day. And um, that may contribute to, to Alzheimer's, the development of Alzheimer's. You clean out the clutter, and you <laughs> yep. need seven hours to do it. I got a lot of clutter. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any uh, sleeping aids that you recommend? The best sleep aid is the good sleep hygiene. Um, but if you're still having uh, trouble sleeping, um, if you're having trouble falling asleep or you've got a symptoms of insomnia, the best thing to do is um, talk to your physician, especially one that's familiar with assessing or treating sleep disorders, because um, the most recommended um, therapy for insomnia are behavioral therapies. And um, so this includes the good sleep hygiene, but it also incorporates other things like uh, stimulus control, relaxation therapy, um, cognitive therapy to improve your sleep. And, and those are what the, the initial recommendation for treating insomnia. Do you think it's uh, electronics that have changed, have been the game changers in, with regard to people not getting enough sleep, phones, TVs, computers? Do they, do they play a significant role, a big role in people not getting to sleep, you, people not having good sleep hygiene? Well, this has actually been a problem for decades. It's, it's not just in the past few years that it's become a problem. Um, so, but, but electronic devices can contribute to this issue. So uh, listeners may have heard that light from electronic devices in the evenings can make it harder for you to fall asleep. But they can also disrupt your sleep by keeping you stimulated and making it hard to relax. So if you're notified every time you receive a text or an email or a friend has posted something on social media, your sleep's going to be interrupted. <laughs> I think I heard an anecdote once that uh, sleep... Uh, we started having sleep deficits when electricity was invented. <laughs> that uh, right. We, so are, so yeah. that's more than than uh, the past you know few years. <laughs> right. Right. Otherwise, your body starts to go into well, it's getting dark. It's time to go to sleep mode. And when you've got artificial light, then you are prone to stay up longer. Right. right. Interesting. Makes sense. Well, there are got a lot of good reasons to get more sleep, eh, Doctor Wheaton? Yes, definitely. All right. Well, thanks so much for being with us, Dr. Ann Wheaton, sleep expert at the CDC in Atlanta, Georgia. Thanks very much. All right. Thank you.